You know, it's funny. On Monday, I really wasn't sure yet what subject I would want to do for my next video. Uh, after covering ZDG2, uh, Zen 3 Plus, or a lack of Zen 3 Plus, and Van Gogh, there wasn't anything immediately jumping out at me. And honestly, when it comes to opinion pieces, I think I already know what I think about the 3080 Ti and so on. Uh, so honestly, in the past week, I've been probing into just about everything. Uh, experimental distant Intel products, which there's a lot of odd things they're at least working on. Uh, Zen 4 and RDNA 3, of course, although in my opinion, it is too early to be covering these things super in depth. And NVIDIA's behind the scenes business moves with ARM and, well, other people actually, by the way. Uh, heck, I've even finally been re-looking into upcoming Xbox and PlayStation stuff. So, I guess look out for a smorgasbord of content in the upcoming month. But right now, eventually, an email arrived in my inbox that made me arrive at covering AMD. This individual supposedly had some really specific technical specs about Navi 31 Swordfish and a die that I could take a look at. Which, I'm not going to tell you about the specs, let's just, let's just go into looking at the picture. I mean, right when I saw this, this immediately looked fake and yet like I had seen it before. I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but God, it just looked like an amalgamation of things I've seen somewhere. And why was it so fuzzy? Probably to cover up how cheaply made the Photoshop job was. But anyways, if we look at it with a fine tooth comb, the reflections on the die kind of look off, but I suppose you might expect different types of like reflection angles with a seven nanometer die versus a five nanometer die, which of course he claimed the IO die was seven nanometer and the compute dies were five nanometer. But well, reaching out to a contact at AMD, someone that couldn't confirm directly if this was real, did say that an IO die that skinny would be very hard to manufacture if it was real. And then additionally, when I looked at the placement of GDR6, something just seemed off about it too. Again, like I had seen that before on something, and also it just looked too traditional to me. Like if you'll remember Ampere, I remember being told before it came out that the GDR6 would be placed really close to the die for latency requirements with their new architecture. That turned out to be true. And I guess I don't expect RDNA 3 to have the same requirement necessarily as Ampere, but I don't know, this is a non-traditional graphics architecture using multiple chiplets, I, I would expect that the GDR6 wouldn't just look like something on a 290X or something. Um, well, I mean, really the best way to debunk something like this is just find, if you can find, part of this picture from something else. And eventually, does this look familiar? This is a Navi 21 die. If it's not looking obvious yet, let me just flip this over. Yeah, it seems like the guy just flipped over the Navi 21 packaging and made it fuzzy, hoping me and the Moore's Law's Dead team wouldn't notice, which I did run it by other people on the team. And, uh, well, after I realized that, too, something else occurred to me. And probably the best point you can make. Why would the picture of the die, the first one supposedly to leak, be this perfect bird's eye view of the die, right? Why? Like, think about Sapphire Rapids that was leaked by Yuki Ans. It was from the side. It wasn't perfect. And it wasn't fuzzy, though, either. And then think about my A6000 leak. Again, not professionally taken pictures from an angle. DG2, not professionally taken. Heck, in some of the pictures, you can't even really see part of the Intel logo. I usually have to fix that in post. It's there from other angles, but that picture didn't capture the L. Why would there be this perfectly positioned picture that's super fuzzy? Guys, this thing was just obviously fake. And this information, therefore, should be treated as all fake. You know, maybe something like this will turn out to be true, but it's clear if any of it does, fake info was thrown in with real info. Best case scenario. And look, in general, it's just far too early, I think, for this info to be leaking. AMD's getting better at controlling leaks, as far as I can tell, not worse. It's highly unlikely we would get some info this specific this early remember that bogus big navi leak i debunked uh mid last year i think in june you know that's like five months before it came out this info i was just sent is at least i would say eight months before rdna3 launches it's just way too soon and so 
Look, even though it's too soon, that does get me to what many people will think is the most interesting part of this video. Confirming what I do know about RDNA 3, which I think it's too early, but when I see these insane rumors going around of triple the performance of a 6900 XT, I, I guess it's just time for me to tell people what I know right now so that we can try to set some realistic expectations early. And forgive me, I'm not going to use the usual PowerPoint step-by-step -step thing I do with most leaks because it's just too early, and I don't want to give you the impression that the design is done. RDNA 3 is not done. It could change. I wouldn't be surprised if much of the lineup ended up being monolithic if something went wrong near the end, uh, you know? But on that note, the first thing I will confirm is that RDNA 3, as of now, uses at least one I.O. die and at least one compute die for the top model. I confirmed this back in August of 2020, and I say at least because I'm not going to go out on a limb and say, oh, it has to be this many. What I know is there's an I.O. die, there's a mountain of evidence and multiple people confirming that, but... Yeah, it's probably going to have at least around two compute dies, right? But if it's not 100%, I don't want to give the impression it is. And the people telling you they 100% know what it is, even AMD does not yet. It is not done. So you should expect, though, that this will be the first AMD architecture, maybe besides CDNA 2, which might come out this year, to have an IO die and multiple GPU chips. That way, they can scale like Zen 2 and later Zen architectures, spreading out, making a gigantic die that gets better yields than if it was one big monolithic die. And because it has an IO die, Windows should recognize it as a single graphics card, meaning there should not be the traditional crossfire problem. So that's well, that's really exciting. This is a big departure from previous architectures, and it's taking a lot of work. Look, it's progressing just fine, but this gets me to the release date. From the people I talk to, Zen 4 is actually still mostly on schedule, despite the shortages going on right now, and, and the stress of having to do most of the design work during a pandemic. Let's just be honest. RDNA 2, most of the work was done before it came out. You know, but... Zen 4 should probably come out early next year to mid next year. RDNA 3, I'm told, could slip one or two quarters. So even though it looked like they might try to do some reveal at the very end of December, I think it's fair to say that RDNA 3 should launch at the earliest early 2022. And you shouldn't be surprised if it actually slips to mid to late 2022. But I certainly hope it doesn't. Um, well, let me just say this, though. If RDNA 3 managed to launch early 2022, I think it could actually take the performance crown pretty firmly from NVIDIA this time around. Now, this will be the most interesting part of the video to most people who watch, and I want to stress this is early. No one should be doubling down on final performance estimates, just like a lot of people got a lot of performance estimates wrong about RDNA 2 before that came out, and that was just months before it. Um, but but the 3X claims, they sound like utter bullshit to me. Uh, I've had people in very harsh terms say that's horseshit. There are a lot of horseshit rumors going around right now about RDNA 3, so I don't know why I can't believe I have to say this. Do not expect big RDNA 3 to be triple the 6900 XT. At least don't expect that right now. However, do not rule out a 60 to 80% boost or even a slim chance of doubling performance over RDNA 2. And let us remember, the greatest source for big Navi for RDNA 2 was AMD themselves calling it 2X. So I think 3X RDNA 1, which if you think about it, RDNA 2 actually overperformed expectations a bit. So I would say... Navi 3X publicly confirms AMD should expect at least a 40% boost above the 6900 XT with a 50% or higher efficiency boost as well. And again, from what I'm hearing, it could be over 60%. So yeah, this gets me to why I think that should be enough or could be, could be enough to firmly take the performance crown from, well, NVIDIA. Right. I haven't just been looking into AMD. I've been looking into what NVIDIA is up to. And well, as you guys saw, I confirmed the 3080 Ti 12 gigabyte from my sources, which should be, by the way, nine and a half percent better than the 3080. Surprise, surprise. Uh, in 4K, that is. But as far as I can tell, Ampere's basically all NVIDIA has for a while. 
I mean, heck, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Copite Kimmy publicly confirmed on Twitter that he does not expect anything but Ampere for a long time from now. And look, I'll just speak for myself. I think that person has been by far the most accurate NVIDIA leaker, especially when it comes to information long before an architecture releases. You know, so I can say that from what I'm hearing, NVIDIA doesn't have anything for a while. In fact, to be specific, I am told that as of now, NVIDIA has no plans to do a fully next-gen refresh for the professional lineup for all of 2021, and that they don't expect the shortages on their end to get better until around quarter one 2022, which is also when they're indicating they may start sampling a next-gen lineup. Doesn't say it's not just an Ampere refresh, though. So at the best, I think NVIDIA has got a new Ampere refresh around quarter one or two next year. And even if they manage to do, heck, even, even if they manage to do a bigger Ampere on TSMC 7 nanometer, you know, like some monstrous 512-bit die, yeah, I, I would somewhat doubt it could kill RDNA 3, especially if RDNA 3 launches first. There's a very, very real chance AMD could take the performance crown in 2022, and not just by a hair, but by a decent margin if they can launch before NVIDIA has a true competitor ready for AMD's fully next-gen RDNA 3. In summary, RDNA 3 should have an I.O. die and multiple compute dies, most likely two. And while I don't personally expect higher clock speeds, I do expect a big IPC increase. That's what I'm hearing. And much better ray tracing per dual compute units and better geometry performance as well. All of this put together with five nanometer compute dies, I mean, AMD calls it Navi 3X. It should be at least three times RDNA 1, which would be a 40% uh, performance increase minimum. And a lot of people I talk to seem to think it could be around 60 to 80% in reality. Now that won't be cheap, but it could be a real HD5 870 moment. Um, the final piece of information to really emphasize here is something I've told you guys multiple times before. Since 2019, I've been told that RDNA 1 is just the start. They didn't even bother to launch a high-end die with RDNA 1. And that RDNA 2, AMD knew they could maybe challenge the crown if Ampere didn't turn out well. But they didn't expect to win. No one I talked to connected to AMD expected RDNA 2 to firmly take the crown, especially when you take ray tracing into account. It's been consistently reported by, I think, other people as well. But RDNA 3? I've been told since 2019 they want the crown. That, of course, they can't promise they'll take it, that they're not 100% sure they'll take it until they know what NVIDIA's got. But that RDNA 3, AMD is going to be gunning for it. And if they launch first or next to something like an Ampere refresh with something, I don't know, right, 40 to 80% better, I think they can take it. And that is really exciting. And that will just about do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this early look at RDNA 3. I certainly didn't intend to put out a leak about this lineup anytime soon, but... I just think the rumor mill is going insane, so I had to put out something about what I can confirm to set realistic expectations. It will be a beast, but don't go crazy, guys. There were people expecting RDNA 2 to triple performance of RDNA 1 as well, and somehow that just led to some people being disappointed by the massively impressive RDNA 2 architecture. Um, so, yep. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss the diverse set of leaks I've got coming out uh, over the next few months. And as well, please, if you have the extra money, but only if you do, consider supporting us on Patreon. This helps pay for, well, pays for pretty much everything here. This studio I'm building, Dan, the co-host of Broken Silicon, and Gerard, the audio engineer, who helps with so much of the content. We really do need the support. YouTube revenue is like non-existent this year for some reason. And so, yeah, if you have the extra money, consider doing that and you'll get a lot of ad-free exclusive content every week. Uh, otherwise though, you know what? As always, thank you for watching. <laughs>